But now that we've got sort of a general layout and maybe a few of the different domains we might compare, or maybe these are benchmarks in time or steps, whatever it might be, uh, we're ready to put in some content. And one of the things we might want to do is put in some photos. Typically, these are great for providing some context. Uh, so in this case, it's about basketball. Uh, so the court makes sense versus, you know, like something plain and white. Also, we might want actual photos of the people being compared or the stages in time. Uh, lots of reasons to use photos. But these do present challenges with infographics because when you do some, you know, searches for photos, uh, like in your mood boards, you're going to see that they come in all different shapes and sizes. So getting them to play nice together and fit well, well, that is the job of a very cool new thing for you, um, which is a mask. And the way it works is like this. I'm going to go ahead and option drag uh, this photo over here. Now, right now it's covering everything up, and that's fine. Um, but what we'd like to do is make it fit into that sort of area back there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn the opacity down a little bit so I can actually see the grid behind it. OK, so the way a mask works is you drag a shape on top, and it really does not matter what the fill is or the stroke or any of that. It's really just looking at the vector path. And what you can do is you can select it and the photo, which I could turn the opacity back up now. And with both of them selected, so you do have to have both selected, this is going to serve as the frame for this image. So if I right click and say make clipping mask, it essentially is making that frame. Cool. Now, you can see that it wasn't super well aligned. So there's some temptation when working with mask to say, oh, I'll just move it. But you can see that it's actually grouped. In fact, if you go to your layers panel, you'll see that it's created a group which has the frame and then the image inside. Well, the cool thing is if you go to the white arrow, you can select just the photo that's inside and you can still move it around and the frame holds still. So you can get it more centered or if I wanted to now, you know, scale it up. Notice that it did not change the frame or mask that it's contained in now. Okay, so if we're gonna, you know, get this dialed in, let's do it right. All right, so that's a little bit off. Maybe we'll have to turn off snap to grid. Okay, so there's times when you might toggle that on and off to try to dial things in just a little bit. All right, I'm feeling good about that. So with these guys, so I need Jordan and Steph to have exactly the same frame. So the, what you can do there is simply copy the overlapping yeah, shape that you're gonna stick them in. So let's go ahead and bring Jordan to the front um, and we'll do the same thing with Steph. Okay. And for now, let's just get them framed well. So I'll go ahead and take a circle uh, I should mention that these are almost proportional. His head's a little big, so maybe we'll scale that down just a little bit first. Okay, so I want Jordan to fit into that frame. Okay, now I need Steph to be in exactly the same size frame. So all I have to do is copy the frame. Uh -huh. And you can see if I select the photo, then the mask or frame that it's gonna, you know, crop this out. With both of them selected, I go to make clipping mask. And I've got a nice, you know, frame around him. Now, one of the issues that's gonna happen is, let's go ahead and do this one first. But one of the issues that's gonna happen is, if I wanted a circle, like a stroke, like I've got here, I'm gonna need to repurpose that that mask, and I can't really do that right now. If I select it, it's really wanting to grab like the whole mask. Okay, so you can see what's happening here. 
in our layers panel, the mask is really sitting inside this clipping mask group. So I want to repurpose, let's say, this line. All right, so this is kind of an advanced move, but let's do it. I'll hit Command C. Yeah, so I have only the ellipse, not the entire group selected, right? And when I hit Command C, I could go to the top level of this group. And if I hit Command F, that's going to paste that ellipse on top. Now notice, because it was a mask, it turned the fill and stroke off. So what I could do now is I could apply whatever stroke I want. So if I want, let's say, this right, this uh, light reddish color here, I could crank that up. Yeah. And I could do the same thing for Steph here. So I could go to uh, his clipping mask, which is this one. I could select just the ellipse that I used, hit Command C, go to the top of it. So when I paste in front, it pastes above that clipping group. Right, so Command F to paste. And let's use a light blue stroke for him. Now, this would be a good place for me to have remembered how big of a stroke I put on here, right? So I might use the white arrow to say, ah, okay, that's 35 and this one should match. Okay, and that is how you do clipping masks and you can get that kind of nice, um, you know, encapsulated and consistent framing around photos in Illustrator.